Harry Truman once said, it's a recession when your neighbor loses his job, it's a depression when you lose yours. In this video, I will discuss labor market flow dynamics by using the bathtub model of unemployment. This model gets its name because it showcases unemployment dynamics through the evolution of inflow and outflow rates. Think of the unemployment rate as being the amount of water in a bathtub. Water flowing into the bathtub through the faucet represents workers losing their jobs, thus contributing to the rise in the water level or the unemployment rate, as I'm showing you here with this beautiful illustration of a bathtub. Water flowing out of the bathtub through the drain represents unemployed individuals finding jobs, thus contributing to a decrease in the water level or the unemployment rate, as I'm showing you with this arrow. So when both the inflow and outflow are equal to each other, the water level or the unemployment rate is constant, and the bathtub model of unemployment seeks to capture this phenomenon. So now I'd like to actually discuss the model itself. So I'm going to start by writing down the fundamental equation of the bathtub model. Specifically, I'm going to describe how the unemployment rate evolves over time. But as a starting point, let's discuss how the number of unemployed people evolve over time and I'm going to start off by writing the number of unemployed at some future period t plus one and I'm saying future period because we're going to interpret t as being today and t plus one as being the next period so we can think about the next period as being next month or next week or even tomorrow so the number of unemployed tomorrow is going to be a function of variables today so the first thing I'm going to write down is today's number of unemployed. Um, so when we're talking about the evolution of unemployment over time, it's going, to all, it's going to clearly be a function of yesterday's unemployment or last month's unemployment, right? So how many people were, were unemployed last period? That's going to be relevant to what happens to unemployment in the future. So we also have to consider our inflows and our outflows. So people losing jobs and thus becoming unemployed and people that were unemployed finding jobs, thus becoming employed. So let's first start off with the inflow. So those that are losing their jobs and becoming part of the unemployed. So that is going to be, so we're going to be adding this because this is an inflow to unemployment. It's the job separation rate S, which also depends on time times the number of employed workers at period T. So this tells us how many workers that are employed lose their jobs, the separation rate times the number of employed. And sometimes this separation rate is called the inflow rate because these are the amount of people that are becoming unemployed. And then we're gonna subtract the outflow. So that's what's going out of the bathtub to the drain so it is going to be the job finding rate F at period T times the number of unemployed at period T. So this tells us how many workers that were unemployed actually find jobs and thus become employed. And this is the fundamental equation for the bathtub model. But notice that this doesn't involve the unemployment rate. Rather, it involves the number of people unemployed. So in order to convert this equation into an equation in rates, first I need to define the labor force and then I can divide both sides by the labor force, thus converting this equation into an equation in rates. So the labor force, which I'll call LT for any given period, T, the labor force is going to be equal to the number of people that are unemployed plus the number of people that are employed. And this is important because if I divide both sides by L, I get that 1 is equal to the unemployment rate, UT over LT, plus the employment rate, ET over LT. And I'm actually going to rename these variables as follows. So the unemployment rate will be lowercase UT, and the employment rate will be lowercase et. So using this, I can actually rewrite this law of motion for unemployment into a law of motion for the unemployment rate. And let's do that 
in a different color here. Let's do that in pink. So the unemployment rate tomorrow is equal to the unemployment rate today plus the inflow in rates minus the outflow in rates. And so this is the equation that we will be working with for the remainder of this video. So this is the law of motion for the unemployment rate. So another way you might see people write this equation is by doing the following. So if you subtract UT from each side, then you can write it like this. So it would be delta UT plus one, where this delta UT plus one is the change in the unemployment rate between periods T and T plus one. That's equal to the inflow minus the outflow. And so this is basically, if we're looking at it through the perspective of the bathtub, this is the change in the water level on the left-hand side, and that is equal to the difference between the inflow and the outflow. So if the inflow is greater than the outflow, the water level rises. If the outflow is greater than the inflow, then the water level drops. So that's basically how you can relate this equation to a bathtub. Now I would like to discuss the notion of a flow consistent unemployment rate. So this occurs when the inflow is equal to the outflow and therefore we achieve flow consistency and the unemployment rate is therefore constant. So this is defined as the inflow being equal to the outflow. So what's our inflow again? Well, remember the inflow is the job separation rate times the unemployment rate. This tells us the contribution of um, employment that becomes unemployed, so that's our inflow. And then we have our outflow, which is the job finding rate times the unemployment rate. These are those that are becoming employed that were unemployed in period T. So when the inflow is equal to the outflow, we achieve flow consistency. So going back to our fundamental equation, we have ut, delta ut plus one is equal to st et minus ft ut. Well, when we have flow consistency, this equality holds, and therefore the right hand side is zero, therefore the left hand side is zero. So we have delta ut plus one is equal to zero. So we can actually solve for the flow consistent unemployment rate, and we can do that by simply looking at the equation that defines the flow consistent unemployment rate. So in order to do that, we need to replace ET with one minus UT, because remember, the employment rate is just one minus the unemployment rate. So we have ST times one minus UT is equal to FT ut so now we have one equation with one unknown and so we can go ahead and solve for the flow consistent unemployment rate so we have st equal to ft plus st where i've just added st times ut ut to each side and that's all times ut on the right hand side and now divide each side by ft plus st and we are left with our flow consistent unemployment rate which i'm going to call ut star that's equal to st divided by ft plus st so now let's go ahead and interpret what we've solved for here so when we have a flow consistent unemployment rate as follows well, we know that delta ut plus one is equal to zero. Recall previously that I said delta ut plus one, if we're looking at it from the perspective of the bathtub, this represents the change in the water level. When we have flow consistency, well, inflow equals outflow, therefore the water level remains constant. So there is no change in the water level, which that's what delta ut plus one equals zero represents. And this tells us exactly what that water level is or what that unemployment 
rate is um, when we have flow consistency. And furthermore, you'll notice that the flow consistent unemployment rate is rising in the job separation rate or the inflow rate, and it is falling in the job finding rate or the outflow rate. And that makes sense intuitively because we should expect that if people are losing their jobs at a faster rate, well, this flow consistent unemployment rate should be higher, right? Furthermore, if people are finding jobs at a faster rate, we should expect this unemployment rate to drop. So that's the intuition behind this flow consistent unemployment rate.